Hello, fellow paint wranglers. I am back. Uh, as you can see, I already have quite a mess going. Um, I've done a few paintings and I would love to give you a nice clean workspace, but I cannot clean up after every painting or I wouldn't have time to paint. So today, this is a 20 by 24 canvas. Um, I'm basically gonna be doing my uh, the cells without silicone technique. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I've been having a lot of luck with, uh, with this particular formulation, which is two parts Floetrol to one part paint. And then I add, most people just add water to thin it out, but I do a mix of, um, Water and Floetrol, it is 90% water and 20%, I'm sorry, 10% Floetrol, 90, 10. Um, so today the colors we will be using, Dioxazine Purple, Prism Violet, Quinacridone Magenta, the orange is a mix of the quinacridone magenta and cadmium yellow light hue. What I have noticed in my previous pours is that the magenta and the cadmium yellow light hue uh, are very cell reactive. Um, so it's a lot easier to get cells with those colors. The uh, magenta and the yellow are semi-transparent. <clears throat> the prism violet is transparent. And the dioxazine purple, which is what seems to wind up being the background most often, is opaque. I made a chart um, of some of the basics uh, colors that I have and what I've noticed is the colors that tend to pop up as cells. What I've noticed when the paintings are dry but unvarnished, I can see that the cells have a more matte appearance than the background. And I've noticed that some of the colors are definitely more matte than others. The medium magenta is actually pretty shiny as is the Ezrillian Crimson, but the Ultramarine Blue uh, comes out very matte. Um, the Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue is shinier than the Cadmium Yellow Light Hue, and I have had better luck getting these cells without silicone with the Light Hue than I have with the Deep Hue, which makes me think that there is something to the matte, uh, on the Liquitex Basics website, it says that all of their paints are satin finish, um, but they are definitely different finishes. I'll see if I can uh, get you in close up so maybe you can see some of that. Okay, so here you can see that the light portrait pink, the light blue, the prism violet, medium magenta, they have a shine to them. The Azrilian Crimson also has a shine. Let's see a little bit of that. Um, the Primary Red, Primary Yellow have a bit of a shine. But the Cadmium Yellow is very, very matte. And it is more matte than the Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue. So my theory is that the different makeups of the paint might make it more likely to pop up in the cell. Now I know that specific gravity plays a part in making cells, um, but I find it odd that all of the cells that pop up have a matte appearance. 
And yes, Floetrol can mattify your paints, but I'm using Floetrol in everything. Um, and you can see those test swatches are straight paint from the tube. There is a difference, even though on the Liquitex Basics uh, site, they are all supposed to be set and finish. I had someone ask me if I am getting paid by Liquitex. I am not, I get paid by no one, uh, <laughs> except people who buy my paintings. Um, however, if Li Liquitex or anyone else would like to sponsor me, I am loyal. So let's get started. I'm Italian, very loyal. 24 by 24 canvas, this would be 25 ounces of paint to cover. The chart for the amount of paint that you would need for a canvas is available on my group, Go Make Some Art. It is a JPEG, so I cannot uh, put it in the description box that I know of. All right, so we are going to Layer the paints, darkest to lightest, gently down the side of the cup. Okay, and now on to the prism violet. Um, this canvas has a bracer bar, which is this is sitting on. I would not normally do this um, if that were not there because that will get heavy and make your canvas sag. This canvas has already been prepped, sprayed with water on the back to make it nice and taut so that it is not saggy. All right, Quinacridone Magenta. This paint is mixed to a very, very thin consistency. When, um, when I pull the stick out and the paint drizzles off, it disappears. It does not form a mound on top of the paint it's falling into. It just immediately blends. I'm pretty sure that I mix this to the absolute thinnest that you can get it without breaking the chemical bonds, the polymer bonds. Now you'll see this orange has the cadmium yellow and therefore is heavy and it's sinking. As did the magenta, which tells you that, that these paints have a higher specific gravity. That's why it's sinking. But the good thing is it's sinking. It's going into the purple and when it's pouring out, it will mix in. If it's too thick, the yellow will just sit on top. So it needs to be thin in order to sink. And I think I misspoke. I think I said this needed 25 ounces. This actually needs 21 ounces. Okay, let me move these paints so I don't have an oxidant. I'm going to put down a base coat. It is Artist's Loft Flow Acrylic, white, obviously, mixed with Floetrol and with my water and Floetrol mix. add it to get it to the proper consistency. 
So the reason I add a base coat is because it helps your paint to slide around on your canvas. I have entirely too much stuff in my way here. Accident waiting to happen. Always keep a clean workspace. <laughs> I see some people in my group when they post their workspaces and they're so organized and tidy and neat. And I am so jealous. I'm kind of a member of the uh, organized chaos team. It's like, it may be a mess, but I know exactly where everything is. Unless someone else put their fingers on it. You want your um, base coat to be thin. You do not want your base coat to be thicker than your paints. Or it will fight back when you are trying to tilt. It will push back against the paint that you are trying to stretch around. And that is an undesired effect. It will cause you to have your cells get all squenched up and sometimes make very odd looking um, patterns on the end of your Of your puddle. I try very hard to do something and be able to speak and I have to try the whole walking and chewing gum thing. Okay. So this doesn't need to be perfect but you want to make sure that you don't have lumps, humps in your, in your background. All right, let's make a mess, shall we? So my, my yellow has completely sank, which is a good sign that I will be able to get lots of cells. I am pouring from up high because I want the paint to churn. As it hits the puddle. Very hard for me to talk while I'm doing this. My little Fibonacci spiral at the end. Whew, 
Okay, I can breathe. You can already see it's starting to happen. Zippity-doo-dah. Oh, I promise I won't go into my Ethel Merman. I promise not to go into my Ethel Merman. <laughs> Once I start, I can't stop. Popping bubbles. There are a lot of bubbles that are created when, uh, when you are pouring from up high like that. And I'm gonna actually pop any bubbles that might be in the background because I don't want white cells popping up. If I can avoid it, probably could have used less paint. You want to recenter your paint. I'm having this little spiral thing here, it's not a bad thing because I know where center is. I know that that was done in the center of the painting. And as long as I tip off even amounts of paint, that will remain in the center unless I decide otherwise. The more I move this and stretch it, the more cells are going to pop up. Let me get a little more off that edge there. to be patient, let it move slowly. Back to center. I will tilt a little bit to the corners. Not necessarily off the corners, but just to cover it more. Come back, come back.
had that happen yesterday. Didn't do much for my painting. <laughs> Hmm. So now I'm trying to figure out how I want the composition of this to be. This is all a little too dark here. I have once again forgotten my gloves because I'm terribly naughty. Naughty. All right, let's, uh, I want to push my Fibonacci in that corner a little bit, I think. Actually, you know. Bubbles. All right. I like that. Do I leave the edges white? Perhaps I'll just blow a little bit. I hope y'all cannot see my hair because I look like a swamp witch. I got rained on and I'm naturally curly. Do not hold it against me. Barely certain I just got paint in my hair. <laughs> if I were wearing gloves, I would have never done that. Okay. All right. Well, it's a similar uh, cell structure to, um, what is it, video 14 or 15? I've forgotten. Um, but again, that was a bigger... That was a uh, 24 by 30. So you get a lot more stretching um, out of that. And it's the stretching that makes these cells. So the more you stretch it, the more cells seem to pop up. If I were to tilt all of this purple off to here and pull it back, there would be even more cells popping up. Um, but I don't want to do that. I kind of, I kind of don't mind 
and having a two-tone kind of thing going on there. Like my little Fibonacci spiral. Hopefully it stays in place. My cups are level. Yesterday I had a uh, cup collapse and I didn't realize it. And so my painting had some unexpected runoff. All right, I will uh, grab the camera and bring you in for a close up. There she is. Big, fat, juicy cells. My little Fibonacci. Okay, so again, you know, if you want to try to recreate this effect, it is absolutely possible. Um, you know, you cannot repeat a painting. It is, that is not possible. But you can get similar effects. And if you follow everything as closely as possible with as few substitutions, you have a much better chance. This can be achieved with any kind of paint, I'm sure. I do think that Floetrol has a big part in it. Um, Floetrol does cause cells, whether you want them to or not, sometimes. Um, yeah, so, you know, give it a try. Follow as closely as you can. Once you get it, then you can start tweaking and trying different paints or different formulations and see what works for you. That is it for me. Thank you for watching. Please join us at Go Make Some Art on Facebook and post your own masterpieces there. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. Go make some art and you will. Okay, amendment. As you can see, I've changed the background color to black. I just like the way that uh, that looks in contrast better. So um, basically it's the same as I did in the other video. Uh, started off white, ended up black. I just prefer it. Any places where the white is still showing through like so, I will come back when it's dry and just brush it. Places where the white has come through on the edges, I can just make a glaze with the prism violet and go over top of it and it'll look perfect okay goodbye go make some art